On today's Locked On Texans podcast, it's 12 wins realistic for the Houston Texans. Schedule's out, win or lose. We'll check and see how that goes. We also dive into the YouTube comments where you guys have been tearing it up. One comment sparked the segment. We'll get into all of that and more on this Friday show. You are locked on Texans. Your daily podcast on the Houston Texans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers to this Friday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm your Texans football analyst, John Some Sports Guy Hickman. On the other side of the screen, Texans Credential Media member of Sports Illustrated's own. Thank you to all of our first-time listeners and viewers. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, thank you to all of our returning listeners coming back as Cody and I continue to talk Texans heading into the weekend. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Cody, take it away. And on today's installment of Locked on Texans, John and myself will be looking at some of the top comments in the YouTube section because when you take a look at rookie minicamp and, of course, the schedule release that took place Wednesday night, the YouTube comment was on fire. So we're going to talk about that. And one particular comment uh, sparked a very interesting topic that I cannot wait to get into. But we're going to open up this Friday installment of Locked On Texans, looking back at the schedule because expectations, a potential top five quarterback. I I, I think we need to start saying this, too. A potential top five head coach, Mm. a potential top five offensive coordinator, a potential top five offense and defense. A lot of people are expecting the Houston Texans to be one of the best teams in the league for this upcoming season. And after after the release of the 2024 schedule, a lot of people had the Houston Texans winning somewhere in the ballpark to 10 to 14 games. John, I saw some people having the Houston Texans win 15 games, which I do believe 15 is way out there for this organization, but not just this organization for any organization in the league as of right now. However, John, I do believe the most realistic record that I saw came from my publication, Sports Illustrated. Um, They did a prediction record for all 32 teams in the league. And they had the Houston Texans finishing with an 11 to six record. They had them beating the Indianapolis Colts, Tennessee Titans twice, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Buffalo Bills, Chicago Bears, Lions, Dolphins, Ravens, and Patriots. They had them losing to the Colts in the season opener. The Jazz in their second game, Packers, Jets, Chiefs, and I definitely hope this is not the case, the Dallas Cowboys. But, John, when you take a look at the Texans record, we already been talking about it ever since the end of last season, what we are expecting from this team. Um, And as I mentioned, potential top five quarterback, potential top five head coach, and all this other stuff that could potentially be top five for this organization. Do you think 11 to 12 wins is realistic for this organization, especially when you keep in mind that they have not the, not the first, not the second, not the third, but the fourth hardest schedule for this upcoming season. Yeah, I I do think 11 wins is very doable. They won 10 last year. They, They are, they are a better team now, got better and, you know, on both sides of the ball, I think all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. You got offensive coordinator coming back for a second year, being able to, like we talked about earlier in the week, being able to uh, have the opportunity to go deeper into his playbook, right? Got your quarterback coach coming back. You added some pieces, Stefan Diggs, uh, Daniel Hunter, right? So you, you, you got a team that is primed for at least, I think, 11 wins. I think 12 wins is also in play. I think 13 wins would be in play. The wow. first six weeks of the season, Houston takes on the Indianapolis Colts. We presume that Anthony Richardson will be a starting quarterback at that point. Mm-hmm. While every other rookie quarterback from last year had an opportunity to at least play half of the season, he only had an opportunity to play in two and a half games. Actually, just two games. That's true. <laughs> Everybody else is kind of a year ahead of schedule while he's having to technically go through I would say the ups and downs of a rookie season. Week two primetime game, you got Chicago. That's going to be a Sunday nighter. 
Yeah, Keenan Allen is there. Yeah, they drafted well, right? But they still have a rookie quarterback. By no means am I counting out Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears because last year we saw a rookie quarterback in C.J. Stroud give teams like Pittsburgh, Tampa, right? Uh, Tampa was a playoff team. Give playoff teams some problems. But I do think that that's where I'm going to look at D'Amico in this defense and say, hey, you guys cannot let Caleb Williams go out there and be the reason you won. Kind of like I'm sure a lot of teams did last year. Minnesota rebuilding team. Yeah, they got Jettles. John Grenard is on the other side of the ball, but that's a rebuilding team. Jacksonville, a toss-up game, but I think that's winnable. Buffalo, a toss-up game where I can see that going to Buffalo. New England, a rebuild team that doesn't have the pieces and foundation in place, I believe, and I've, I've watched everything that they've done so far to compete with what this Houston Texan team is right now, with where they are right now. So the first six weeks, you're looking at a team that can go four and two, five and one, possibly, potentially six and zero. Oh. Six and zero. Oh. Okay. You know, just, just, if we, and right now, and Cody, you know as much as anybody, I hate these. No, I know. Days, <laughs> but if we look at what's been added on paper, right, the team that they have on paper, if we look at some of these other teams, Houston is playing in the first six weeks. At the very least, they I know Buffalo still has Josh Allen, so I'll count him into that. They're playing four out of the six teams that are in a rebuild stage right now. Hmm. Houston was in their boat last year, and they were able to win some games, but at times you saw them, Carolina, um, Atlanta, Atlanta, New York, New York, uh, Cleveland, you saw them have those moments where, oh, yeah, they're still a rebuilding team. And I think early in the season, you're going to see Houston come in in better shape than some of these other teams. So I do believe 11 to 12 wins is realistic. Again, I can see Houston capping off at 13 wins. Mm. Um, I, I don't see 13 wins. John. You know me. I, I hate these record positions, too. Maybe we could circle back and start playing around with how many wins they could actually win. Um, Probably at the end of mandatory okay. OTAs, uh, like which is camp. like – we oh, oh we can do training, training camp, Let's do training camp. Let's do training camp for sure. But um, like as of right now, man, just knowing what I know about this team, I'm gonna say 11 probably is going to be the cap because I just take a look at one the bye week is way late in the season. So you're looking at a situation where you don't know how many players are going to be banged up at the time. Um, and I just keep going back to what Coach D'Amico Ryan says. The one thing that he do player, coordinator, or coach, as soon as the schedule come out, where's that bye week? Of course, the perfect bye week is at the middle of the season. Their bye week is week 14. They're probably like one of the last teams to experience a bye week. And like I say, it's concerning because you don't even know who's going to be banged up and, and, and who is going to need that extra rest um, just to get healthy. That's concerning. And, of course, man, them last couple of weeks of the season when you got to go up against, uh, you know, Baltimore and Kansas City, and even though I don't like them, I still got to respect them in the regular season at least. Dallas, you still got Miami. With, you know, hey, but Houston quick. got better though, man. And they won. I mean, Houston got better games but, last year. Yeah, Are they not and, and worth no, two extra games this year. I want to say yes, John, but once again, the bye week with it being so late and. That them last five six games of the season is going to be tough. That's true. So okay, so let's listen, Colts. I think they can win their game, and I'm going to mention all the games I believe Houston can win. Mm -hmm. Indy Week One, followed by Chicago, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Buffalo, New England, Green Bay. Those are seven games off the bat. I think that they can win. Not saying that they will, but I believe that they could be favored in those games. Where it gets tricky, a toss up. Okay, Dallas. I think that they can beat the New York Jets, how that team is currently put together. Uh, Detroit, talk, you know, it's one of those tougher games. Uh, late in the season, both Tennessee and Jacksonville will be tougher games for them where you can go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that, that last stretch does get tough. Miami, Kansas City, Baltimore, in and off with Tennessee. But I think how they were able to get better in the offseason during free agency and the draft, if they won 10 last year, then I can see them winning 12 this year. 
I think they've done good enough adding talent to this roster to get an additional two wins along with everybody else just having another year in the system on both sides of the ball. Mm. Um, here's how the rest of the division shaped out according to Sports Illustrated when they did their um, record prediction. Um, they had the Jacksonville Jaguars coming in second with a 10-7 to record. Indy 8-9 and the Tennessee Titans, John, and I'm going to continue to bring them up, up because of what you said. Five and twelve. <laughs> it's winner take all season in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. One hundred and fifty bucks a bet on spreads, money line, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com/slash/locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Welcome back in Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Before we move on and talk about what will happen if expectations are not met, I'm going to give you guys some great news. So if you're not following Dylan Horton on Instagram, follow him now at dhorton underscore 98. He posted the video. He is ringing the bell. And in the post, glory to God, final treatment so this is great news for dylan horton this is great news for this young man he'll finally be able to start the process of just getting himself back to where he needs to be physically mentally and spiritually and then mm. eventually down the line whenever it's time we'll get to football but this is great mm. news for this young man and his health and life yeah, and now we're going to transition over into what will happen if expectations are not met. And this topic came about from my favorite YouTube comment from Jarrell Scott 5203. He posted on Tuesday's installment of Locked On Texans that if the Houston Texans do not make the playoffs this year, who will be the first person to get fired? In this particular order, he asked Nick Casario, defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator, and three head coach. Um. I truly don't believe if the Houston Texans do not make the playoffs. Nobody's getting fired. I don't think nobody's going to get fired. Why? Because there's two ways I'm looking at this from. One, even though we are expecting big things from this organization, you still have to keep in mind that they are still a fairly young team. And when you have a fairly young team like this, this is not a team like the like the Buffalo Bills for, for the sake of this argument who has, who has went through four consecutive years of – not meeting their championship expectations. That's why in this offseason, we saw them make several moves. And then during the regular season, we saw them make coordinated changes. With the Houston Texans side of things, like I just mentioned, they're still young and everything is still fairly new. So if something happens and this team falls short of 11 to 12, 13 wins, and you know they don't make they don't make the playoffs. Nobody is going to get fired, but two and most importantly, John, I do want to say this. I think the success that they had last year gave – I'm not going to put Coach D'Amico Ryans in this, but for general manager Nick Casario, I think that gave him an additional year of grace. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of people – not all, but I think a lot of people – and I'm not saying my man Jay Scott is, is one of them, but I do think a lot of people still looks at Nick Casario like, uh, what's gonna happen? Something's gonna happen, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come back to you, and we're gonna look at you like ah, it really wasn't you. But I don't think Nick Casario is going anywhere. We know the head coach ain't going nowhere. And on Jarrell Scott's list, he was third, but he ain't going nowhere. He signed a what was a five year, six year deal. Uh, I believe it was a. I don't know. Either but way, he, he, Smith signed a five and six year deal too. He right, but he ain't done. going nowhere. He <laughs> cannot afford to move on from him. Um, the office of coordinator, let's look at that. He won't be fired. He'll probably just get a job somewhere, you know? Um, defensive coordinator, Matt Burke, I, again, I don't think he'll be fired. Um, I don't think any of these guys will be fired. If it, if I was to play devil's advocate to challenge that, it would be Matt Burke. I, I'm not going to say fired, but, John, I do believe in and you just say, Relief. you know, with the they calling duties on the on the defensive side of the ball, maybe. I mean, I, I, I don't see nobody getting fired. Nobody's going to get fired, but what I would say, and this goes back to what we talked about early on in the week, if the Texans fall short of playoffs, expectations are they just take a step back in general. 
I think the number one person that's definitely going to be hurting all of this is going to be Bobby Slowick. Because as of right now, I think if we took a poll, who was the number one guy that's going to get a head coaching job in 2025? His name is probably, if it, if it ain't number one, it's number two, depending on how you feel about Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator up there in Detroit. So I, I think that is going to be the long negative of if the Houston Texans miss out on the playoffs or fall short of their high expectations. Yeah. But other than that, I, I think as of right now, everybody's job is safe unless something crazy happened and they go, I don't know, one in 17 or one in 16, something like that. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But again, I think to play devil's advocate, it, you know, the first thing we would have to look at is, okay, who regressed mm -hmm. and why? Was it a player? Was it a position or was it a whole side of a ball, right? And then you start to look at, you know, why they progress. And, again, I think Bobby Bobby's name is so hot right now, it's going to be like the Ben Johnson effect, right? Like at the end of the season, people are still going to want that man mm. to head coach their team. So, again, I don't see fire from him. The only coach I could see – of those three, I mean, of those of those three options would be Matt Burke. But then again, that would mean that the defense altogether took a step back. And, and I'm sorry, guys, I think it's pretty hard to do when you have Daniel Hunter, Will Anderson, and, and some of the athletes and, and pieces that they have on that side of the ball. So I don't see nobody getting fired. I also don't see Houston not reaching expectations or getting close to it. Um. I think everybody's job is safe. The only thing that may not be safe is, well, the only thing that we may see from keeping them to return to this team is them leaving to go find other opportunities. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks led lights and more whether you're into speed power or style or all three ebay has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash you got everything you need and if you don't get a chance to get it or it doesn't fit your ride the first time every time you get your money back with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the MVP uh, of the road and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back in, Locked On Texans <laughs> listeners and viewers. So uh, I know the last shot was Cody in the dark and I was doing the read. <laughs> Uh, for the ad, and then our lights went out. Well, Cody's lights went out, so that mm -hmm. postponed the recording for a day, which is yep. why you see me with different clothes on, right? But we we right back and bring y'all more <laughs> Texas talking content. We're gonna dive into the YouTube comments, and I think this is probably the funniest one. Uh, my man Tom Walker, man, got a do rag on with no waves. This hmm. is diabolical. He probably got on Black Forces. That's the energy the Texans need to go 13 and four. Go Texans. I didn't think I deserved that type of shot. I, I didn't think I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't think that was fair. But Cody, you got a black forces story that you would have one of the players who gives off black forces energy. Kamar Lasseter. He had it on yeah. doing rookie minicamp, man. <laughs> Plain and simple. So maybe, maybe y'all might be on to something, man. That, that that's all I gotta say. You know, and, and I, and I do early on. That. Early on in the show, or should I say yesterday, uh, early on in the show, you know, we talked about, you know, the Texans winning 11 to 12 games. But if the whole team coming out, you know, wearing black forces like Kamari Lassiter, that means they standing on business. They standing 10 toes down, which means maybe 13 wins might be in the making for this organization. If they got on black force cleats, just know that they're going to steal some games. <laughs> they're going to take away some games. Hmm. Uh, Country Sh TV. Say, man, we're not worried about nobody on the schedule. Bring the bees on. And thank you for cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. We're going to fade and invite 
any invitation any team want to bring. This ain't that old era BS. New boss, new sauce, new drip, new ship. We selling, Jack. We not picking up no passengers. This is the best and most talented team since yeah. never. Swan, baby. And the reason why I'm screaming, because he put all that in all caps. <laughs> but I do think a lot of fans are kind of looking at how this team is put together. And, of course, when you have a quarterback like CJ, and I've talked to a lot of people, you know, of course, off camera, they feel like this is their best quarterback in franchise history. Regardless of your feelings about four, he was, at that point in time, the best quarterback to that point in franchise history. A lot of people feel like C.J. Stroud has a ceiling to be better than four. So I think a lot of fans are looking at the schedule, the ten game, the three games and ten games, which is still rough. Mm-hmm. The NFL, really, that, that, that hurts Houston, I think, a lot. But I think fans are looking at it and saying to themselves, we got who we got. We mm-hmm. believe we can go win games against whoever you line up in front of us. I'm first of all, Deshaun and Houston was special, and I'm not about to turn this to a Deshaun versus CJ conversation. But what I will say, John, the one thing that I love where I believe CJ is definitely going to thrive is the fact that and you heard me say this a lot here on the show is not only do you have the quarterback, but you have the play caller. And that is very important because you remember as good as Deshaun was in Houston, as good as that offense was at time um, a couple of years back, the one thing that kept holding them back was Tim Kelly, Bill O'Brien, that offense was not suited to the strength of their players. And Like I mentioned a lot, the one thing I love about Bobby Sloan and this coaching staff is the fact that they are willing to listen and work with their players. And that is the reason why this offense, regardless of who they play against, they're going to have an opportunity to take that next step like we always dreamed this franchise could. So I don't know what was going on, but Cody was getting a lot of backlash this week. You got BW72581, Cody B. hating. But Top G4545 had two comments. The first one was Cody Davis. And by the way, Cody is spelled with a T. Cody Davis, we don't give a damn about what you are fond of and not fond of. Of your, of your, or of you, not fond of. Excuse me, there should have been a period there. Keep your personal opinions out of these takes, bro. Then he also comment, bro. I'm watching this and I'm cringing at the sound of your guys' personal opinions to who should be on the team and who should not. The thing is, neither of you dictate who will be on his team or not. Yeah, we know that. (laughs) We're not general managers. We're not coaches. We're we're two podcasters. Uh, But what we will say is we may have a little bit more knowledge than some of you guys. And I think the whole point, and this is on Alani Johnson, uh, so and, and shout out to Top G 4545. The whole point of having these podcasts and discussions is talking about how the roster is set up and who do you believe, talent wise, skill wise, will be able to beat out another person. So I don't know why that bothered you <laughs> earlier this week, my man. Uh, I'm watching this, I'm cringing at the sound of your guys' personal opinions. This is a podcast. But in the not- off season, <laughs> during the dead time of the year, I mean, every but, podcast is filled personal opinions. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but I'm like, I don't know what a personal opinion is because if it's the episode that I'm thinking, we really did a deep dive into Lonnie Johnson Jr. There's two things I said. I say one, I don't think that he is going to have an opportunity to make the team because of his skill set or the lack thereof of his skill set. But at the same time, I did double back and say when you have at the time Lonnie in those first couple of years in Houston where a lot of people thought and felt, including myself, that it was disappointing, it was hard for him to get a hold of the NFL because of the lack of coaching that he had, the several coaches that he had to go through. I mean, he had to – he was in a defensive scheme with – Anthony Weaver at one time, remember that so-called anxiety defense? Then it went to Lovey Smith. And, 
you know, my whole point of, you know, talking about Lonnie's first year with the Texans and the lack of his development all stems from, it wasn't a shot at Lonnie, if I could clean it up, it was more so a shot of the organization. Because when you have, and this is not an opinion, it is a, it's a fact, because just like I said in that podcast, I've covered not one, but two rebuilding franchise situations where anytime you change a coach and, and, and the coaches change their system and everything. A lot of these young players, you start to see them struggle. It's because they're not only still trying to get accustomed to whatever league that they're playing in, but they're also trying to find their way and learn the ins and out of the new coach, i.e., let's just go down the street and take a look at the Houston Rockets. Look how damn good Jalen Green looked over the in his first two seasons playing under Steven Silas. And look at this year. Majority of his year, a lot of people was calling him a bust. He wasn't sorry. He was just trying to get accustomed to Coach E made you Doka's system. And once he got accustomed to him, you saw his ass took off in March. So right. that's all I was trying to say. And look, Talani Johnson Jr., we're hoping we could see a resurgence like that because not only do you have an opportunity to get into arguably the best system that you ever played with, but you're also going to have an opportunity to, to learn and develop under some of the best teachings and coaches that you ever played with. So I don't know whether opinion came in because like I mentioned, that's not an opinion. That's more so of a fact because whether it's Lonnie Johnson, Jalen Green, CJ, because in CJ Strauss, CJ Strauss's case, he's going to have that consistency. So that's going to prove another point that I was making. It's not an opinion. It's a fact because we've seen it a lot here in the city of Houston on both teams. Bro, I'm watching this. I'm cringing at the sound of your guys' personal opinions uh, to who should be on the team and who should not. The thing is, neither of you dictate who will be on his team or not. I don't know what to tell you, Top G. You know what? Maybe that's Lonnie Johnson. Maybe maybe that's a burner page for Lonnie Johnson Jr. I don't know. Top G. Maybe, but, but if it is... Look, Lonnie's going to have his opportunity starting next Monday, next Tuesday at the start of voluntary OTAs where we will be out there taking notes and coming back on the show talking about what we saw. Um, I guess Our that's personal be, opinion. I, have to say, I guess that's going to be an opinion, too, even though we're there um, between, you know, when John put his glasses on, we will have eight eyes out there inside of NRG Stadium. So <laughs> top G. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching and listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, it's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Peace. Stay safe, Houston.